Good morning, St. Michael's. <clears throat> Happy Pentecost. My name is Chris Ishibashi, and I will be serving as the online chaplain this morning. I'll be with you in the chat, both on Zoom and on Facebook. A warm welcome to any of you who are worshiping with us for the first time today or visiting, either online or in person. We are eager to greet you and to learn more about you, so stay tuned because we'll say more about getting connected to St. Michael's later in the service. Our service today includes a celebration of the Holy Eucharist. If you're joining us from home, you can participate in the sacred meal symbolically by finding something simple to eat and drink. And when it is time for the Eucharist, you can join along with those present in the sanctuary. It's a blessing to be gathered together in this hybrid in-person online St. Michael's space. Take a breath right now and allow yourself to rest here in God's presence. Come, let us worship together.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Lord is risen Let's pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in your holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy Pentecost, St. Michael's. My name is Janet Curry, and our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. 
the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. The Word of the Lord. Happy Pentecost, St. Michael's. My name is John Stickney. Our second reading is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, 
and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be with you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Take a deep breath. You can put your hand on your chest, feel your lungs expand and contract, your chest rise and fall. Breathe in, breathe out. You are running, squealing with joy, playing a game of chase with mom or dad, not knowing the path you'll take but letting your legs carry you with glee, running with reckless abandon, not even noticing as you breathe faster and faster with excitement. You are running away from the neighborhood dog, fear gripping you, legs feeling like lead and body working so hard to get just a few feet, lungs pumping like mad to match the adrenaline coursing through you. You have fallen to the ground, tripped and bruised, unable to stand again, your knee searing with the kind of severe pain that constricts your lungs, forcing yourself to take shallow breaths like a woman in labor. You are getting to the last mile of a 5K or a half marathon or a whole marathon, breath and legs and heart working together in a determined rhythm to get to the finish line. You have just come home from the funeral of the best friend you never imagined you would have to bury. Grief surrounding you like a lead vest, so heavy you can't breathe. You are sitting in the audience at a show so captivating the whole audience has been holding their collective breath unawares, and the moment that curtain goes down, you and everyone around you exhale together a collective wow as applause erupts. You are gathered in a living room with friends reliving stories from years ago, laughing so hard your chest hurts as you gasp for air. You are in a hospital waiting room or a job interview or a room where you will face the person who abused you, the anxiety of anticipation leaving you breathless. Your boss just left the company unexpectedly and you've been told more responsibility is coming your way, but no one seems to know what's up. For weeks, you go into work confused, unsettled, unsure of what comes next unable to breathe easy. 
Your boss ascended into heaven unexpectedly, and you've been told more responsibility is coming your way, but no one seems to know what's up. For 10 days, you and your co-workers are confused, unsettled, unsure of what comes next, unable to breathe easy. But it's the Feast of Weeks, which is also called Pentecost, so you still gather together. In the midst of confusion, you stick to the rituals and rhythms that shape your life. And Pentecost is a suitable feast on the occasion of uncertainty. Pentecost was a Jewish festival day commemorating the giving of the law by God to the Israelites. All Jews gathered on this day to commemorate this feast. After all, the law is what shaped their community life as Jews. The giving of God's law was a culminating event after they had fled slavery in Egypt and began to wander in the wilderness, wondering what came next. Its occurrence 50 days after Passover corresponded with the tradition that Moses received the Ten Commandments 50 days after the Exodus. Now, the Exodus, of course, was quite the event. You all know the story. Charlton Heston parting the Red Sea, allowing safe passage for the Israelites away from their Egyptian captors, the Israelites narrowly surviving that exodus only to find themselves wandering in the wilderness rather than the promised land they had been expecting. God had promised them deliverance, but not a timeline. The law was the way for God to provide for them, to bring some order to their chaos, to let them know God had not abandoned them or forgotten God's promise. Pentecost was God's promise still unfolding, in process, while everything was still unsettled. God's promise delivered quite differently than expected. Perhaps then Jesus' disciples should have been a little more prepared for the surprise they got on Pentecost. Jesus had promised them the Holy Spirit in a way that sounded a lot like what they would expect at the therapist's office. They were promised an advocate, a comforter, a helper. These are all translations of the word from Greek. To be with them forever. What they received was rushing wind and fire and confusion and accusations of public drunkenness. Hadn't Pentecost taught them anything by now? God's promises often turn out a lot differently than you expect. We sit here today also wondering what's to come of the promise made on that Pentecost day 2,000 years ago. It's the promise of prophecy and dreams and visions and the spirit of truth being poured out upon all flesh. The factions alone in this country are e enough to prove that the spirit of truth is glaringly missing. It seems the only part of Joel's prophecy we're seeing with any regularity is blood and fire and smoky mist. The state of the world has all of us at least a little depressed, sometimes a lot depressed, sometimes to the point where it sits on your chest and makes it hard to breathe. And my friends, it's not a coincidence that we feel like we can't breathe when we're anxious or depressed or grieving. In the most biblical and theological sense, to lack breath is to lack spirit. To lack spirit is to lack breath. The utterly uninspired state of the world can and should leave us breathless. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the literal breath of God becoming our own. The Holy Spirit is not a muse. That's not what we mean when we talk about the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our very source of life. The biblical scholar Ellen Davis spoke at a climate justice event that I attended recently. It was an event that featured dance and poetry and music. Her words that night could have been spoken to the disciples on that Pentecost day 2,000 years ago. She said, we are here 
because we live in the age of the unthinkable. I dare say none of us expected to find ourselves in this new era, looking toward a future whose dimensions are unknown and much of what we do know is frightening. We are here because we have an inkling that the performers can help us rethink what it means to be people of faith living in this situation. They will do it by showing us something beautiful, even heartbreakingly beautiful. It may be a paradox to look to what is beautiful in order to reckon with something ugly and ominous. That is just what beauty does, inspires us with a vision of what is good, indeed, what is godly. When our breathing rushes and slows, starts and stops with the ups and downs and changes and chances of this life, beauty inspires us. Beauty is how we stop to catch our breath. It may seem senseless to seek beauty in the midst of confusion, to seek inspiration in the midst of grief. It's more instinctual to scatter and flee like those at the Tower of Babel, or demand explanations and answers like the disciples of Jesus did. But beauty is how the Spirit comes to us. It is our own little daily Pentecost. God's promises for us are still in process, and they will always unfold in different ways than we would hope or expect. So like the disciples, we still gather and pray in the rituals and rhythms that shape our lives. Chances are the Spirit will show up. We will be inspired in ways that we never imagined. You are leaving church after an uplifting service. The rhythm of hard rubber smacking asphalt dots the grunts and cheers from the basketball court as you walk by. Squeals of children and haulers of parents float past. You notice the overflowing sidewalk garbage cans and the delivery guys on bikes whizzing through the red lights. You notice the smell of the flowering lilac and the radiance of the peonies. A breeze dusts your cheek and teases the branches of the trees and the messy beauty of it all settles into your gut and you take a deep breath, a breath that is the same as God's very spirit alive in you. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our ancient faith in God and God's Spirit among us with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Oremos por la iglesia y por el mundo. Omnipotente Dios, concede que cuantos confesamos tu nombre, estemos unidos en tu verdad, vivamos unánimes en tu amor y manifestemos tu gloria al mundo. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sogolerani antu amziko linondi amitundu yonse. Munjira za chilunga mondi za mtendere. Kuti tilemekezane wina ndi mzake ndi kutumikira za buino zonse. Lord, in your mercy. Donne-nous révérence et respect pour la terre que tu as créée, afin que nous utilisions bien ses ressources au service de l'humanité, en ton honneur et pour ta gloire. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Tanrım beden zihin ve ruh bakımından acı çeken herkesi rahatla ve iyileştir. Onlara sıkıntılarında cesaret ve umut ver ve onlara kurtuluşun sevincini getir. Lord in your mercy. Kuvor mu tunet kanat kahansning polor hankutyalnere. Vor besi gadarvi ku gamkat anons hanteb. Yev garoteng vor garenank gisvil ku polor sur peruthed ku habiden agan takavorotyanat mech. Lord in your mercy. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of Christ be always with you. La paz sea contigo. La pace sea con voi. 주님의 평화가 함께 하시기를 바랍니다. Irini pace. Günaydın. Tanrı'nın barışı üzerinizde olsun. Barış. Barış. Peace be with you. Que la paix du Seigneur soit toujours avec vous. Tendere un bouillon calendil. Frida Fiel. Kararutyun amenetsun. Lomuno luamwami vube andinue. And now, friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for all.
May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Holy One, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, holy God, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Holy God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, Jesus gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Christ who died and rose for us, you sent the Holy Spirit, your own first gift for those who believe, to complete your work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Jesus to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, Jesus took bread. 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Almighty God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming Christ's resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting Christ's coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. God, our creator, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Jude, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray together as our Savior Christ has taught us in whatever language you choose. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We gather together at God's table in body and spirit. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey today, you are welcome to receive. If you're joining us from home, we invite you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion and to share symbolically in this meal. If you're here in church, we'll be offering communion here from the front and also from the entrance to the church at the St. Jude's altar. You can come wherever suits your seating and your mobility. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
I'd like to invite forward our lay Eucharistic visitors who will be taking communion to those who can't be with us today. In the name of St. Michael's Church, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share together in one bread and one cup. Amen. Please stand and join me in our prayer after communion. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do. To love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. These microphones are just one fumble after another. Welcome, good morning, and happy Pentecost. It is a joy to get to celebrate today, a beautiful sunny day to welcome the Spirit here with us, to welcome newcomers who are here with us, those who are joining us online and here in person. What wonderful music you gave us today. Thank you all so much for that. <laughs> If you're here with us today for the first time, or if you just feel like you're out of the loop, if you go to the back of your bulletin, there are some QR codes you can use to get to places that will give you more information about things that are upcoming. Later today, two different things. For those who pursued the Sabbath challenge and tried to find some way of keeping some Sabbath during their lives over the last seven weeks, we invite you to join us for our finale, our gathering with our friends from Ansha Hazed, who will be hosting today in the backyard. So just join us out there. If you didn't do the Sabbath challenge, but now you wish you did, you can also come. <laughs> and we will gather starting at 12.30, so there's a little bit of time between the end of the service and that. But come and join us in the backyard for that fellowship and kind of a little uh, debrief on how it all went. And then later at three o'clock, our wonderful adult choir and St. Cecilia choir will be leading us in a choral evensong to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. So please come back and enjoy that service here today at three o'clock. There's a couple of the things that I have to say, but there's also some things that other people have to say. John Stickney, why don't you come on up? Next Sunday, we have the joy of Youth Sunday when we celebrate the youth of our parish and their teachers. And then as the grand finale for all of that, we have a barbecue. So John, tell us about the barbecue. Happy prospect again, St. Michael's. I am still John Stickney. <laughs> standing in for Margaret Jolly on behalf of that next Sunday, Youth Sunday Potluck Barbecue. It's the first since Pentecost 2019, I understand. And at that event, uh, I can promise you, you can expect that divided tongues as of fire will appear among us. 
all of us will be filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. But we need volunteers to make this happen. Bring a side dish, salad or dessert to share. Help us set up, serve, grill, and clean up. Our co-chairs are Jackie Barker and Cecilia Flores. Uh, and today I'll be in the back to help you sign up. Uh, you'll also find a link in looking ahead. Uh, and then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Mick Parsons, come on up. We have a wonderful and active outreach committee that has been in the discernment and conversation about how to engage more prayerfully and actively in mission and ministry here. And so Meg Parsons is going to speak on their behalf. Okay, oh, maybe without my mask. Uh, so Ned asked me if I would come and speak about outreach. Um, in connection with the Saturday Kitchen. And I thought, really? <laughs> I'm not exactly the poster child for volunteering at Saturday Kitchen. I've probably volunteered maybe 20 or 25 times over the last two and a half years. But um, I'm thinking maybe there's some method there. Um, it's not necessary to, you know, go every week uh, if you're worried that volunteering will uh, turn into a lifetime commitment. That is not the case. They are very happy to see you, whether you show up once in a blue moon or every week. Uh, the vibe at Saturday Kitchen is very relaxed. Uh, I have to say a, a young woman who I volunteered with a number of times put it very nicely when she said she liked volunteering at the kitchen because uh, it was kind of loosely organized and uh, there's nobody with ego involvement who was, you know, running the ship tightly. Uh, everybody just did what they needed to do, and we got the job done. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good reading of uh, the experience. Uh, nice, nice, nice group of people, uh, and I encourage you to come. I do other volunteering. I file taxes for low-income New Yorkers. I volunteer at homework help, uh, and I think that there. Are the reason I like to do hands-on volunteering, um, I do write checks. None of them are big enough to make an impact on a program or a person. Uh, so I feel like I've always had enough. Um, you know, I've had enough food, I've had enough shelter, I've had enough family support, I've had enough education. Um, and I, I think everybody should have that. Uh, I want everybody to have that. Uh, and I feel like you know, uh, my volunteering is not going to turn the dial for the health and welfare of the nation, but I feel like every little bit helps. Uh, and I, th I think the other reason is that uh, it focuses my attention sort of away from my own stupid little problems and uh, onto other people's really much more challenging, bigger problems, and I think that's healthy. Uh, so. Go and do likewise. Okay. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, we'll get to celebrate and sort of wave off into the summer our kids and their teachers. This Sunday is our chance to do that with our adult choir and the wonderful organ scholar who has graced us this year, Rebecca Ahrens, who is moving on to a new organ scholar position at the National Cathedral in Washington, no small thing. So let us give the round of applause for the adult choir, but also Rebecca. And let's stand for our final blessing.
May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.